Ronya Gilmore is the head of research at the property website and app Zoopla. She was previously head of residential research at Knight Frank. So Gronya, uh, recent figures uh, showing that an almost 10% drop in London rents over the past year have prompted headlines saying that the young are flocking back to the city. Uh, can you give me a bit more details on that? Absolutely. So our rental index is showing in the year to March, um, rents in London were down 9.4%. Now that's mainly driven by larger declines in the centre of London. So what we did is looked at demand in inner London versus outer London. And that's right up till the end of April. And we could see that from in the previous six weeks, so we've got children went back to school, we had the easing of lockdown, and we have seen the demand levels for inner London, as well as some other inner cities around the UK, starting to rise. So you can see that that's the pendulum swinging back for people perhaps who had uh, left the city to be elsewhere during lockdown. But as amenities open up, high streets, restaurants, bars, offices, you can see the demand swinging back into inner London. And uh, there have been complaints for years that the high cost of living was driving the young out of London. I mean, isn't it a good thing that rents are, 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 are dropping? Well, in, in terms of the uh, demand pools, they will be greater, as we know, if, if rents are more affordable. Um, but there is very strong demand still for rents right across London. And we're still seeing that kind of interplay between people wanting to be perhaps or allowed to be slightly further from where they're working. Um, and they can perhaps have a, a, a home with a garden and more space. And then the people who definitely want to be at the centre of things. Now, what we've got coming down the tracks as well is we had supply come on to the residential rental market at the beginning of lockdown because global tourism had stopped in London, global business travel had stopped. So some of that short-term rental accommodation came into the mainstream rental market. As we start to see global travel um, resume, we could see some of that supply start to move away again. So you, you may start to see that that kind of uh, additional supply that has been in the market for the last year start to go away amid rising demand. So we, we, we foresee maybe that those rental declines that we've seen in inner London will start to ease. But there are, there are suggestions that the uh, population of London has actually fallen somewhat, as mainly as a result of Brexit, really. Um, so if there has been that uh, longer term reduction in population, uh, presumably then uh, some of that uh, fall might be more, more permanent or at least longer term. In, in terms of um, who's coming into London and, and where they're living, um, the overall macro picture could paint that uh, there may be some changes. But what we see is for popular rental markets with good amenities, good transport links, that demand uh, remains definitely in place. We know that we have a shortage of supply of rented accommodation supplied by individual landlords because since the additional stamp duty came in in 2016, we have not had the level of investment into the market that we previously enjoyed in years before that. So there is constrained supply and that is a structural issue for the rental market in the UK. So developers uh, building for rent ought to be uh, getting moving after COVID now. There's, there's definitely demand, rental demand. It has remained in place throughout the pandemic. We've seen it shift perhaps in geographical locations, but we know that there is rental demand. We have people now coming into the sector who have perhaps been living elsewhere during the pandemic or are just moving in to their first rental home. We've had the squeeze on the ability of first time buyers to get onto the first rung of the housing ladder. So they've stayed in the rental sector for longer. So we just have continued rental demand. We've seen it right through, but what we're starting to see is that geographical shift now back in to the inner cities. So you mentioned about people looking for greener space and gardens. So uh, what, what do your figures show us about the, the sort of much publicized general migration from, from cities? And, uh, do you see London really being affected by those moving out of the metropolis to sort of greener places as a result of COVID? It, it's definitely a factor of the rental market and the sales market that we have seen a cohort of um, families and individuals choosing to be somewhere else. So pandemic, we spent a lot of time in our homes during lockdowns and some people just reassessed how and where they were living. And we've definitely seen some rural markets really spark to life in the both rental and the sales sector. 
but we have to look at the whole picture. And the reality is that most people buying a home, most people um, renting a home within cities are still looking within the cities. Now, some of them may be choosing to move into the slightly outer zones of the cities where they perhaps can get more space, where they may have access to gardens. We certainly know that access to gardens or um, homes with gardens are the most popularly searched for properties. But the good news for renters is that about 50% of listings have these um, gardens or access to, to green space. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a consideration post pandemic um, but there is still going to be demand for flats or apartments that don't offer that because it suits people for other reasons, because it's close to work, because it's close to transport, close to family, close to schools. So do you think in, in the long term we're going to see London becoming a younger city uh, in, in a post-Covid environment? Potentially, um, if families are, some families, those cohorts who may have made that move, that they could free up more housing for younger people. But affordability levels are still a constraint, even in the rental market or the sales market. We have seen a big drop in rents uh, in central London, as I said, uh, more than, you know, we're into kind of low double digits in some boroughs. But affordability levels are still quite constrained. Having said that, the average affordability level in London for rents is now, um, you know, at the most affordable it's been in 10 years. So there has been a sea change. So we could see a slight uh, change in demographics in certain areas of the capital. And finally, I guess uh, the last year has been pretty good for Zoopla, as uh, along with many other tech companies. Uh, they're uh, one of the winners from this uh, uh, very disastrous year. Well, the, the housing industry in general, as we know, it, it stayed open. Um, it was one of the sectors of the economy. It was sort of the bright spot of the economy because it stayed open. And there's been a lot of activity as people reassess the need for housing, but also the network effect of the um, people moving and buying and selling and renting new homes. It has such a good network effect for the economy. But yes, it's certainly been a busy year for agents, conveyances, uh, mortgage finance and everybody involved in the um, house buying and selling and renting industries. Jolly good. Well, Gronya, thank you very much for those insights and discussing the impact on the rental market of COVID-19. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.